Hello, my name is Henry Renfrey, and this is a Raylib game development tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to cover platforms and how to make it so that Henry can jump on those platforms. In this tutorial, we're going to work with two platforms. We're going to work on a floor and a floating platform, like what you'd find in Super Mario Brothers or any type of platform game. So, the first thing that I did was... I set up my jump variables that we will use. Jump is a boolean variable and we have a jump timer and then we have a boolean variable that determines whether we're on the floor or not and we have another boolean variable called collisions and this variable is what's going to tell us whether we collided with the platform or not. And then I set up my platform's location, width and height. Here I set up my floor's location, width, and height. R remember, X means going right and left, and Y means going up and down. So here we gave our platform a name. We're going to call it a blue platform because the platform will be blue when it appears on screen. And we just finalizing the setup of where the platform is going to be, how wide and how large the platform is going to be. Here we did the same thing to the floor. We gave the floor a name and we're initializing where the floor is going to be and how wide and how tall it's going to be too. The floor was going to be underneath the player. Okay, so we go down. Okay, now this part is where we're going to have a, like a gold rectangle to serve as our player's foot. And that gold rectangle is basically just going to be a collision shape to determine whether our player Henry has collided with the floor or not. Or determine whether Henry has collided with the platform or not. Notice we're not using a sprite for collision purposes. We're using a rectangle as an anchor point to ensure that our player's sprite I emphasize sprite, the word sprite is touching the ground and we can move this collision shape around to ensure that we get that appearance. Once we launch our game, you'll see what I mean. And then here we set up our Boolean variable to determine whether Henry landed on the platform or not. And here we set up our Boolean variable for whether Henry landed on the floor or not. If Henry lands on the platform, it'll run certain code. And if Henry lands on the floor, that'll run certain code. The coding will be similar, but we're just keeping them separate. Okay, so now we're dealing with creating the effect and making the jump and platform landing happen. So this says if Henry's on the floor, his position, or at least his sprite position, will be at 320. Even though the collision shape might be higher his actual sprite was set to be lower and once we launch a game again I'll, I'll show you what I'm talking about so this says if we press the A key jump is true and once jump is true Henry will go up and down at a speed of 2 but instead of 2 we wrote this variable called movement and this jump timer determines how long Henry will go up into the air and how long it will take for Henry to come back down to the ground. So this says if the jump timer is below 80, Henry will continue to go up. As Y means go up and down, and minus means to go up in computer programming. Otherwise, else means otherwise, if the timer reaches above 80, and if Henry is not touching the floor, then go down. And more specifically, if Henry's collision shape isn't touching the floor, then go down. And you'll see what I mean once we run our game. And this says if Henry lands on the floor, or at least his collision shape lands on the floor, jump will be false, the jump time will go back to being zero, and Henry's actual position will be 290. Not the collision shape's position, but Henry's sprite position will be 290. 
so that Henry's collision shape won't be on the floor completely. Otherwise, the way this code is set up, Henry won't be able to jump again if his collision shape is on the floor completely with the above condition. When you finalize your game, this is something that you would delete. You don't you don't want to keep this draw text here. But this is this is just our helper to let us know that to give us an indicator whether Henry landed on the floor or not. You probably will barely see it because once Henry hits the floor, Henry and his collision shape is going to go up a little bit. But if Henry lands on a platform, Henry will be above that platform. So this says if the A button is pressed and Henry's on top of a platform, this will reset our jump timer to zero. All this part does is just restart our ent entire jump process again that we talked about up here. You remember? Once the A button is pressed, Henry will be moving up at a speed of two. Jump timer will start. And when jump timer is below 80, Henry will be going up. When the jump timer is above 80 and it's not on the floor, Henry will continue to go down. If Henry lands on the floor or platform, then that stuff will stop. The jump will stop. and Or Henry will be on top of the platform until he presses the A button again. Or if Henry walks off the platform, that means he's not on the floor. So he will just go down until he lands on the floor. And that's the way we got a game set up. If Henry is on the floor and runs into the platform, Henry will get some kind of jolt while he's jumping because the computer will combine both the the speed for when Henry is jumping off the floor with the speed when Henry is jumping up onto the platform. And then thus we get a, some kind of weird jolt when Henry jumps and that's not what we want. So this part was put here to prevent that. And finally, we draw all of our items on screen. We draw the foot collision shape, which will be deleted later to make everything look natural. Then we draw the blue platform, and we draw the floor. Okay, so let's launch our game and see what happens. Okay, so here's our game. And as you can see, we have this yellow rectangle under Henry Sprite. Because that's what determines whether we colliding with the floor or not. If Henry collides with the floor, then Henry will slightly up, like we wrote here. And that's why you're not seeing this draw text function here. Because if Henry touches the ground, draw text function just flashes. And let me show you. So, Henry's on the floor now. Uh, Henry's going to jump. And when he goes back down, you, you see that brief flash of floor collision. Let me show you again. Flash. See? Because that, that's when, so, because when Henry hits the floor, he goes back up, like we wrote here. Okay, so now let's see what happens when Henry hit, lands on the platform. Jump up. And notice, it's not the sprite himself. It's the collision shape that we made that's landing. Like what we have here. See? If Henry collides with the platform, Henry stays up. So Henry's on the platform. Now we're going to try jumping again. I'm going to press the 8 button. Timer's reset. Henry goes up. He comes back down. Henry goes up for 80 seconds and then comes down. Uh, even when he's on the floor, Henry goes up for 80 seconds and then comes down. He goes up 80 and after 80, if he's not on the floor, Henry continues to go down. Okay, so, and then one more thing. Let's see. Henry goes up and then, let's see. Let's say Henry goes off of the platform. Well, that means he's not on the floor, right? So that means he just continues to go down until he reaches the floor. And one more thing that you might want to do is just do this. And then we're going to just restart our game. And thus, this is what Henry looks like without the collision shape. See, everything looks a little bit more natural. See? He jumps on the platform, looks more natural. That's what we got right here. So, that's the end of this tutorial. Take what you learned in this tutorial and expand on it. You know, create more platforms and stuff. Uh, thanks. Bye. Dude.